All right, let's continue this. I'll try to finish out some file stuff system things here today. Hopefully, probably not, maybe. We'll see. I wanted to, I found one bug that if the last name in the path when I'm, when I'm getting the parent inode, if the last file in there that's found is a directory, then my function that I made on the last part is not gonna work. It's just gonna return that directory for the last thing in the path. So I wanna fix that. And then I might make another little helper just to return an inode given an inode ID, because that's an absolute offset into the inode blocks. So that'd be relatively easy if some somehow we already knew the ID. That could be a faster way, such as uh, for getting the root inode, for example. I didn't put I thought I'd put that here, but no. <laughs> that could be a faster way of to getting the root inode because it's a, a set offset. It's the first inode always, ID one. So that would be something, or later on maybe it would be easier. We don't have to search for a name or anything if we have the ID. So that may come into play later. I'll make that. And then I should be able to maybe finish out create file. Maybe I can think of a test for that and open. We'll see and get to close and stuff. So we'll see what happened. I think I have new. I didn't write any code really, I don't think, but I did put. Yeah, just that that was a bug and I wanted to investigate it. I put comments here for parent inode from path. I could also make it a bit shorter, which I kind of shat this out in like a, a couple minutes. <laughs> Guess I'll get that off recording. Um, I pooped this out sort of in a couple minutes earlier today at lunch. So I don't think I'll need to basically copy the stuff from inode from path here for the parent inode. But currently, if the last thing in the path is a directory, then I'm going to set right here, previous inode equal to that. And then either way, what we return will be the last thing, not necessarily the last things container, right? You know, if we have something, if we have like this path here and we go through it, if file C is technically a directory, folder C, it's gonna return folder C and we wanna return folder B regardless if we're getting the parent inode. So I wanna fix that. But I think I can fix that by getting rid of all this code. <laughs> so I'm going to do that and make this shorter with my kind of test here, if this works. We'll see. Let's get rid of three there. Uh, so what do we have? So I'm getting, again, a position to the starting path. So I'm getting, since I have this new string R, maybe reverse character, I'm getting the last slash in the path. You know, so if we have something like this, this string here, I'm getting the last slash, which is here, getting that position. I'm setting that to a null so that anything after this position will kind of not be counted in the string. I'm basically replacing this slash with a zero, with the null, so that we won't count this if we go to get the last inode in the path. We can pass it the string up to here and it should return folder B as the, uh, as the inode there. That's why I'm doing this and that should return the inode from that path. But if the length is zero, so if we only gave it a string with slash and null, and it replaces that slash, then it would just be a null effectively. Well, it would be two nulls, and string length should return a zero for that. So there's probably a better way of doing this, but if it's zero, then I'm saying we only gave it root, so I'm just gonna get the inode from path for root. But that's why I was thinking I should have the helper function to get an inode from a given ID. We could call inode from ID one, and that should be shorter than calling this and looping through stuff, but okay. But otherwise, if we didn't give it just root, then we have to, you know, grab the path. So I'm grabbing the inode from the starting path. Once I get that, so say we got the folder B thing here because this was a null, we grabbed folder B's inode. I'm going to replace that null with the slash to restore the full string uh, in case we need it. Because this is technically a constant, it shouldn't be changing, but it is. So I'm just going to restore that there. We're storing the last name so that if we send it again to that or something else, they'll see, you know, the end of the path as normal. And I have the inode as a result here, so I'm returning that. And yeah, that's all I'm doing for this. I could have typed that out and talked through it maybe, but I did that like at lunch, just thinking through it. So yeah, that should hopefully work, but I'm going to also make, I guess I'll do it above here because I want to call it. Oh. 
Let's make a helper function to get inode for a given inode file ID. So in our inode T structure, we have an ID field. So I'm going to use that ID to just offset from the inode blocks in the file system, which we'll get from the super block. We'll say inode from ID, given a ID, which I think is uint32 probably. And our inodes here, yeah, you went 32, this ID. So in the super block, we have the first inode block. So I would get the sector for that by multiplying by the sectors per block. And then I would add to that, because I'm going to read this to memory probably, read write sectors. We'll read that to memory, offset by the ID value to find the certain sector that we're looking for. And then we'll grab the ID from that, that disk block, that disk sector. That shouldn't be too bad. So if we have this, we can do read write sectors into, into our temp sector here. So I think we'll be able to do that. Should only need one sector starting at super block. Can't type super block dot uh, first inode sector. First inode block. Yeah, first inode block times sectors per block. And we'll add on to that the right sector that we're looking for, which will be our ID divided by eight. So that'll give the right sector number and ID would be, well, I guess IDs or inodes per sector. Inodes per sector is also going to be eight because the size of an, an inode is 64. And eight times 64 is 512, which is in one sector. I could make that also a constant though, I guess. It'd be the same as the other, but maybe not always. And it'd be better to have more constants, probably. That would be after inode. Let's do that. Let's do just have less magic numbers and make a little bit more sense. Inodes per sector, and that will be size of inode t divided by. Well, no, it'd be sector divided by that, wouldn't it? Yeah. FS sector size divided by size of inode T. I hate that it goes all the way out to the end. That's annoying. That's what I meant. So the FS sector size, 512 divided by size of inode T, which should be 64. That should be 8, but we'll just have that there. Inodes per sector in our fs.h file. So we should be able to do inodes per sector. And what are the other parms here? The address that we want to load it to, that would be temp sector, which is a pointer, so I have to cast it. So temp sector, and we'll do read with retry. So that will load the sector. Sector containing inode with given ID, although we could have just a basic guard clause somehow. If ID is zero, return, you know, zero. Probably will eventually return pointers instead of the full data here. And then I can just dereference that when we call this function as the L value later. So we can have, you know, inode result equals dereferenced inode from ID in or something. Because this is putting, you know, 60, well, 64 bytes isn't much on the stack. I just don't know. It'd be slightly faster if we just pass four, but the data access may slow it down. Yeah, performance doesn't matter right now. <laughs> this isn't even isn't even worth thinking about. Okay, if we load the sector, we need to get we need to um grab inode from that sector. And that would be going into the temp sector. So we'll say inode t. This time I'll do a pointer. We'll say temp inode. We'll have I guess calling temp with two different things is is bad. Let's do this. Equals inode t pointer the temp sector, and I want to grab the data. Well, I could just return the data actually. Yeah, let's just do that. We'll do fancy one-liners. Return the inode size data from temp sector, which should have pointer arithmetic now, and we'll add in the ID modulo inodes per sector. So if our ID was three, 
you know, 3 over 8 will be 0, so that's fine. Maybe we'll do like 11, so that would be sector 1, because 11 over 8 uh, floored because of integer division would be 1, and 3, 3 eighths, and then this would give the 3, the remainder. It would offset by that many to get the right inode in the temp sector. And then we'll return that. Yeah, turn inode from sector. So that's all. This could probably be inline, but the compiler probably will inline it as needed. That way, in cases such as this, we know we'll have the root directory, so I can just return inode from id1. Because root is always at, at id1. Turn root inode id equals 1. Yeah, that's all I wanted to do for those, so these are done. I thought that was going to take longer. <laughs> That's all right. That's always good. So file system, create file. What else do I need within create file? Anything? Oh, yeah. I had to get the bits in the bitmap. So we're already doing this. So I don't need the one there. Set that as in use in bitmap blocks. So I may have an abstracted thing for working with bitmaps because I have that, um, I don't know, process for working with them already in the physical memory manager. So I might abstract that and try to make it work for this or some generic byte, uh, some generic chunk of data, not necessarily specific to the physical memory manager and the memory map that we're offsetting into, you know, to find these bits. Have something a little more generic, like here, find first free blocks. This is looking for a bit inside of a 32-bit chunk. And if one of the bits is zero and it's not set, and then we're seeing how many are set for how many, however many blocks we're looking for. So this time we're only looking for one bit. I wouldn't have to keep like a count down here. I would just search for the first free zero and return that position. But I'll do something similar to this, I think. And that may as well be in this file, I guess. We can just add stuff. It's kind of a catch-all with helper functions. Implementation and helper functions. That won't be too bad. And I would use that within create file. So I guess I'll put it before there. So let's say we'll have a sort of generic helper to, how do I want to word this? Let's say find the first unset bit within a chunk of data. Let's say we have a start and ending point, I suppose where I could test like a block at a time or multiple blocks at a time, however we want to do that. Let's say we return, it would be a uint32 or maybe an int32 if I want to say zero, or we can say zero is wrong. Well, zero should always be set, probably, in the inode and data bitmaps. Zero would be an invalid inode, that'd probably be valid. And the data bitmap should always have something at zero for the root. So, I mean, we could probably return zero from this, and then uint32 allows the full range, so yeah, we'll do that. Find first free bit. Um, we can say in disk blocks, find first... Hmm. Find first disk block free bit. I don't know. <laughs> what is it? What's in the name, anyway? So let's say, I don't know, we have, we know where the first free inode bit was, I guess. Let me copy this over so I can get rid of that on the right side. Let me do that. Something in here. <laughs> Just copy all of this. All right, just to get that out of the way, we'll have to change this stuff anyway. Can't return no memory error. Let's return zero. Well, we're not going to do that, actually. We'll test 32 blocks at a time, or 32 bits at a time. This is what we'll be doing. Well, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 4, 28. Yeah, this is 32 bits at a time but we want to check all the bits within whatever chunk we're checking. So I'm trying to think what chunk can we give it or what 
maybe a start and end like a disk block. Do we have access to those good con good contextual ones here? That makes sense. We have the first free inode bit. Open something again. What do we have for for the super block? We have the length, right? We have the number of inode and data blocks. We have the first ones. We have the number of bitmap blocks. So we could pass it the first one and the number, and then we could go through each one one by one and check. Or load up multiple reading and writing from the disk at once to not do as much disk I.O., which would be better. But we have the starting and ending things here that we can use, I guess. I'll probably do that. So if we had something like find and set next free I know bit. Let's update super block. Um, yeah, we'll want to set it as in use as well. I'll, have to, I'll actually have to have multiple here, but the find one will be will be worse. But I'll say to set a given bit in a chunk of data. All of this as well. This will be void. This will be set bit in disk block. Maybe. If we can give it an absolute value, you know, disk block, I don't know. Do return so it said, well, it'll say it's not used anyway, but. I'll need to set and find some bits. Yeah, and that'll be okay. All right. This be set bit in disk block. And this will be. Find first. Let's be find first disk block free bit. <laughs> find first free bit in disk block. That way that'll be consistent. We'll do that. Okay, so I'm gonna pass this two values. I'll probably pass it these values, which are 16, but I we'll say later maybe we'll want to work with larger values, so. We'll just pass them U and 32 T's for these. Let's say the super block dot, this is for the inode bit. We'll say first inode bitmap block. And we'll also have the number of bitmap blocks. This will be the length of data to check. Num inode bitmap blocks. We can do the same for data bitmap block and blocks. Okay, and disk blocks. So we'll have a start and a length is what we'll do for that. So find first free bit in disk blocks. We'll have a constant, you went 32t, We'll say start block, and we'll have length in blocks. There we go. So let's have a for loop. We'll have i is zero, i less than length blocks. We'll have a loop. This is the previous implementation. Remove below. And we know we'll, I guess right now I'll do one at a time just to be simpler and think through it better right now. Read next block to memory. So we'll read one sector starting at, well, we wanna get our first block first. So I'll have start block, pre, um, yeah, we can do start block plus i, because they're gonna be contiguous, the ones right now that we're giving to it. So we're giving it a contiguous range, like an extent. I'm gonna assume they're gonna be contiguous because it's a start and a length, so it kind of has to be for this to work. <laughs> but that's all right. So we're giving it the first disk block. So we know we have a block number, and that's in block, so we have to convert that to uh, 
two sectors. So we'll do plus I. And that will be times sectors per block. So starting out, that'll be zero. And then if the length in blocks is one, then it'll go to one, it'll end if it's in two, then it will go zero and one and then end, and that should be all right for two total blocks. So I believe, yeah, that's the length. And then we'll read it back into temporary sector. We'll get some good use out of that sector in this program. And we'll do read with retry. So I'll probably try and get sort of 32 bits at a time to check within this block here. I know how big the block is. I'm assuming we're using all of it, which is probably not smart, but I think we're going to use all of it mostly. We're assuming all of the data in the block is available for use. So I'll grab a pointer. We'll say, I don't know. Block pointer, I don't know. That's, that's fine. Grab a pointer to temp sector. And then we'll have to go through and check sort of each 32 bits at a time if stuff's going to be available or not. According to, I guess we could do that. We could check how many four byte chunks we can check at a time, which would be whatever our, our block size is, which is 4K, so there'd be 1,024. We probably need another loop here to check which of those sort of mini chunks, miniature sub subsets of this overall 4K block. And we're not, oh, we're reading a block, aren't we? Well, I'm reading a sector right here. Let's read a block, let's read a block instead. That's why I have to talk through in rubber duck things so I don't mess up. Starting at this one, then we could just read, yeah, the starting block. Yeah, which is what I'm doing here. Because I'm multiplying by sectors per blocks. This is reading 8K at an in at a time. Did I make a mistake with that somewhere else? <laughs> I probably did. I thought I did read right first. Hold on, give me a second here. This is reading a block in at a time. That's reading all the data in actually. No next block to check. Yes, that reads one block in. I'm using block here. This reads one sector in, I'm using sector. Okay, I think we're good. A little scared there for a second that everything else was broken. So I'll read into the temporary block, which we also have, yep, right here. So eight sectors at a time effectively, or sector, sectors per block, sectors at a time. Which I don't need these outer parentheses here if I do that. We'll get a pointer to that. Let's say this is a four byte chunk. We'll get a chunk to that. So we need to loop through all the potential chunks in this block, which not temp sector, but temp block. I probably could set this up here, right? Although we need a counter. Well, no, not necessarily. Probably need another counter. We already have I, we could do J, that's fine. J is less than our block size. Probably divided by the chunk size, or you want 32T. That's fine here. J plus plus. I don't need to be using parentheses around every size of either, but I'm not in this. So that's good, okay. This one I do need parentheses because it's a type, but if I was doing like chunk, then I don't need the parentheses, but I have to remind myself of that every now and then. So I can do this like right here, if the data at chunk, so if data at chunk not equal, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we know we have one bit that is free, found one bit that is not set, not uh, one, or to say at least, it's not set. So we have to find which one that is. Let's have another thing here. 
I guess we'll do like this down here. Although it's only going up to 32. So that should be okay. That, that could be 8-bit. Doing our n-cubed algorithms here, you know? But that's okay. It's a low value of n here. Only up to 32. k will be 0. k will be less than 32. k plus plus. We have to check which bit is not set within this 4-byte chunk. Since we found it. We'll have a bit here, but we only use that in those two places. So I don't have to set a new variable for that if I don't want to. So if not, not memory map i. I guess it's a little awkward using a pointer, but that's okay. We probably have to do that for this. Or we can offset chunk by the next four bytes. Hmm. We could offset chunk by J actually, like we're doing down here with memory map. I think that'll be all right. J would be zero and then it would be one, but pointer arithmetic would say four bytes. So that would actually be plus, plus four to check the next four byte. Yeah, and that would only go up to this divided by that, which would be 1024, four byte chunks. Yeah, that makes sense. That should work. Okay, it would be 0 to 31. So if chunk j and 1 shift left by k, that would mean the bit is 1. So we want to check if that's not true. At least one bit. Check. Well, yeah. Check if each bit is set or not. Check if each bit is zero, not set. If it is, found free bit. Okay. That's like what this is doing. If it's not bit, then we found it, except this is counting how many bits in a row are free, and I'm just wanting to return the first free one, which should ultimately be this, which is where it starts. So it's whatever our, in my case, my chunk number, so j, well, chunk offset by j, right? Block size, yeah. Whatever we're checking against the bit, j, yeah. So we'd have j times 32 plus whatever the bit number is. This j is k. So yeah, j times 32 plus k, yeah. That's probably what we have here. j times 32 plus k. So does that make sense? Maybe not, probably not. Have that be constant as well. So if we had the first chunk here that had a free bit, if it was like zero, zero in this position or something, we'll count from below here. So we'll say this is zero through three, this is four through seven, eight through 11, 12 to 15. So this would be 16 uh, through 19 would be Free. So 16 would be the first free bit there. We can do something like E here. So we'd say only bit like 16 would be free or, well, yeah, maybe we'll do that. So this would be like bit five was free, but that would be within the first chunk. J would be zero. So it would just be plus K and K would be the value that we found. So let's say we had something down here that's like, When I do 0B, I don't know, is this little Indian? Is this like, yeah, this would be F and then 0. If C allowed it, <laughs> that'd be the same as this, right? And so if we had this, we would return 0 as the first one, right? But let's reverse that. Which would be 0F. So in this case, the first free bit would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And that would be within the first chunk that we found. We'll say j would be zero, so be zero plus, you know, whatever k is. k would be zero, one, two, three, four. So we'd return bit four, which is the zero based offset bit within our chunk. But if, it, if this was in like some other chunk, like it was in the, the next four bytes after the first four bytes, j would be one. So it would be 32 plus four, which would be 36 because each of these comprises 32 bits. So the next one would start, the next four byte chunk would start at bit 33. 
that's why it'd be 32 plus six. We had bit four, four bytes after, it would be 32 plus four for the next 32 bits. So not explaining that well, but that's why this happens here. Although I'll just make sure by doing that, that it multiplies first. If we didn't find anything after all of this within all the chunks, then we don't have a free bit, which would not be great. Could not find free bits. Bad error. Well, yeah. We'll just say that. This would be up until the lengthened blocks. We're doing the first one. I guess we could check if start block is zero, although we wouldn't care if it is or not. This is a generic function, and we'd only be going to lengthen blocks. If lengthen blocks was zero, then this wouldn't even happen, so that's fine. Okay, yeah, that should be all right. That's our first free bit function. That shouldn't be too bad. And that'll work down here. We want to set that bit as in use in the inode bitmap blocks. So I do want to set that. So update super block. Okay. We can update super block in memory and then write it to disk to update it. We can also do that at the end here if we need to do that. But I guess I'll update it first. Well, depends what stuff's going to be set. If we change the bit in the bitmap, we'll have to write that back to disk. We'll have to read and write within this function. First free bit we're reading, do we have to write anything? I know we have to update the super block, so let's say super block dot first. Well, our first um, free inode bit, yeah, it'd be the new one. Equals find first free bit and disk blocks from the first inode bitmap block to that. This is in create file. I guess we'll have a different function for creating a directory. That's okay. I don't know if I need to write the super block back to disk or not at this point, because we could just write it back to disk at the end of this function. I'm not sure anything else needs its data. We would be updating it. Yeah, I could probably just update it here. If we're updating the parent directory, that might be data bitmap blocks that would need updated. So we're not setting a block here. We are in this, but this is just returning the location. So that should be okay. Yeah, so I think I'll just update that at the end. Read write sector. So the super block takes up one block, which is good given its name. So we'll write sectors per block. starting at the super block address, or wherever the super block is in memory. So I guess we can do super block. I think, or maybe not. Does that take up that much? Super block T is the size of this. The size of the super block is 64, but it is at its own block on disk. Right, judging by the super block address is 8C. I think that takes up a full 4K. So the next available address is 9C. So where would that be writing to on disk? I could just write a sector, really. <laughs> Until the super block's larger than that, we could just write one sector. I don't know where we write on disk. I guess the, well, the address would be super block, yeah. So starting, didn't want to do that. I didn't want to go up there either. Yeah, return that, change it, super block disk sector. I think that does that. And we'll do write with retry. So I don't know where this is. Don't I have a set location for that? I probably do. Yeah, I probably do. It's probably just like the second block. I can't believe I can't remember. <laughs> it's probably like the second thing on the disk. Yeah, after the boot block. Let's just confirm. Yep, yeah, so this will be one. This will be two. 
This will be right now it only takes up one, so this is three, this is four. Of course, if it's zero based, we'll say this is zero, one, two, three, four, plus, and five plus, or whatever. First inode bitmap block is two, so we know it's zero based. So it should be at block one if we're doing zero based indexing. Right, one sector. That's not sector one, that's nine, right? No, it's eight. Because zero through seven will be the boot block. So write one sector at eight, given the address, which is only going to be 64 bytes. So that really, that's not good either, actually. Because that's why I loaded it to its own address. Super block address. Is it in the first or second stage? Is it in the first stage? It might be in. The boot sector. It's not under include. I'm reading in both at once. So 0 to 7 and then 8 to 15 would be for the full super block. And I'm reading that in 8C to 9C. Yeah, so that actually does have a full block there. Okay. So we could read in a full block, even though it's only 64 bytes. Kind of wasteful, but maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> it should still be located at that point, right? Well, it isn't here. Maybe we want, maybe we do want a pointer to that. I'm confusing myself right now. Don't we load that down here? We have the root inode pointer. This takes the data at the super block address, which is only 64 bytes, but it's still the full data at that address. So we probably could do that. So let's update that and we'll write it to disk. So how do we, how do we update that? Um, I could abstract this in case we do it in other places later, actually. So I'll have something to update, just a little two line function probably. We'll have a thing called update super block. And then we would include this here. Don't have that there, there we go. Probably don't want to make that void, but that's all right. Right now it's not going to take in anything. We'll assume the data in the super block has been updated. I am going to write, I mean, right now it only takes up one, but I guess we can write the full thing. Let's say we'll write eight at a time. No, this is the start. Yeah, the start sector would be one. We're not going to give it this. I'll probably give it the super block address. Because that's where it's going to write from in memory. And we'll update that first. So the data. The super block T size of data will be taken from our super block variable here. This is a full super block's worth of data. I'm going to fill in that data at the super block address. There we go. And then we can write that full block's worth of data, which will be eight for block starting at eight because it's right after the boot block. Right with retry. Although I could set this to not be eight. It would be super block address. Well, I already have the address. It'd be super block disk sector or something. Let's do that. I don't want to have to think about these things later. This is after the super block. You can put it up here. Might be better as a define. Doesn't really matter though. Super block disk sector eight. Sectors one through seven are for boot block. Or zero through seven, I guess. Well, if you count one base, then it is. So maybe it is seven, zero through six. No. Yeah, it would be zero through seven if you count that. Because seven minus zero plus one is the length, right? Yeah. So seven minus zero plus one is eight. 
Eight sectors per block, yeah. This would be eight through 15. My mind is failing me fast, but there we go. We'll just write, write with retry that. So we'll update, update memory with current data. Write updated memory to disk. There we go. That way, if we use it in other places, I don't have to think about it. Just have it in one place. Okay. So we are updating that, the first free inode bit. We do need to set the bits within the disk block. What bit do we need to set? Uh, the new inode ID or the first free inode bit before we find the new one. We know that bit is the one we want to set. I know I didn't finish that function yet, but I'll do that. Set bit in disk block. We need, we need to give it a block to set though. So let's do this uh, block. So which block do we need to set? Okay, we need to get the start of all the, <laughs> for this, these are the inode bits. So we need the start of all the inode bits, which is first inode block. And then we need to add the ID. Yeah, modulo eight or not modulo divided by eight, but in this case, the eight can be, what is it? Inodes per sector. Or does that matter here? I could give it a sector to set a bit in instead of a full block. That might be better. Set bit in disk sector. Or would we be loading a full block? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. I might try it with a sector first. That seems simpler. So we'd have sectors for block plus inode ID divided by inodes per sector, which would be the right sector offset from the first one. And then we'll give it the bit number to set within that sector, new inode dot ID. Although if it's the overall inode ID, then that would be across blocks, wouldn't it? It wouldn't be across sectors, dang it. <laughs> I guess we could do inodes per block instead of sector, and that would that would do a block size, right? So that would be okay. And then we'd grab it by modulo. I don't think that would give the right bit number though. We have a lot of bits within a block because <laughs> there's eight bits per byte and there's 4,096 bytes per block. So that would be 4K times eight, right? So 32K bits potentially. So if we had ID 32K, it'd be the end. If we had ID 1000, how do we know? How would we know where exactly to set? I guess we'd read within temp block, wouldn't we? And then I'd write that temp block to disk at the right location. So maybe this would work. Because this would give the right block number that the bit is in. There's more bits per block than inodes per block. There's eight times eight. There should be 64, right? There's eight inodes per sector. There's eight sectors per block. So there should be 64 inodes per block. But I'm not talking about the inode. I'm talking about the bit number specifically within the block. So I should probably do like bits per block. I have a thing for that. Which I think would make more sense here. There's eight bits in a byte, and there's how many bytes within um, within a block? Our block size in bytes, so it'd just be this eight times the block size. One byte equals eight bits. 
So for ID, which is the bit number, is like 1,000. The 1,000 divided by, you know, 32K would be zero, but if we had 33,000, that would be over 32K, so it would be one. We'd have the first inode block plus one, which would be the block that it goes in. So yeah, that should be all right. But which bit do I want to set within that block? We'll also pass that, I think. So how do we do that? Yeah, given a block number and a bit number. We'd have to load the block, set it, and return it, right? So probably, yeah, probably need to do that. Load block to memory. Set bit in block. Write block back to disk. Probably have to do that. Should be more, which would be more read-write sectors. And we're writing a block at a time, reading and writing. So sectors per block, starting at whatever our block number is. So eight sectors times the block, reading it into our temporary block, and we'll do read with retry for our ATAPIO command. So how do we set the bit in the block? We need to find the right bit to set. <laughs> I know I'll be anding it with like with one, right? I'll do and equal probably with one shift left by something. If we're working with 32 bits, it has to be one to 32. What we could do is modulo the bits with 32 to find the right four byte chunk. I guess we could find, yeah, the right four byte chunk within the block and then set that. And we could modulo with 32 maybe, one shift left by, or would it be divided by? How many bits in the four byte chunk? Because if our bit was eight, this would be zero, and we want to do eight, so probably modulo. Yeah, one shift left by zero to 31, and then 33 would be the next four byte. Yeah, 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 yeah. That would be better. We, we need to find something that we're ending with, you know, that value. But then I know we can write it back to this. So we have to find the right four byte chunk to set. The bit in block using correct four byte chunk of bits. So is that our bit number divided by four? No, or divided by 32? Zero to 32 would be zero, and then be one, two, three, four. Yeah, for each 32 bits. So if we divide by size of you at 32, we would get the four byte chunk. Maybe we can do something divided by a bit over 32. This would be a four byte chunk. We'll say you went 32 T pointer to a chunk. But I'm not sure that's correct. Do I have to translate that like within a block size or anything? Because if we have, what if we have like bit 33,000? What are we going to do with that? find a thousand, the 1,031st, you know, four byte chunk here. But that's gonna be beyond our block size of 32,000. So we have to constrain probably within a block size of, you know, 32K in bits. Huh, I'm not sure, let's keep that till later. So I know I, know I want this, because we'll need to use that to set it. So this will be the temp block. So how do we offset to the right amount? Do I modulo? Well, I could, yeah, I could do that. I could modulo the bit by 32K, right? Which would be bits. Do I have bits per block? Did I just add that or did I forget? Yeah, I do have bits per block. So I could do that. My mind went blank, I'm sorry. I'm trying to think of a right name. Naming's, you know, one of the two hardest things. Mod bit or something. <laughs> 32k bit, bit 30 bit bit mod 32k. <laughs> then I know what it is, right? Bit mod bits per block. 
This doesn't matter if it's a changeable value, actually. So let's just do this. Let's do that. So bit equals bit. So this will constrain bit number to this bits per block sized block. That might not be the right word there, constrain, but we'll do that. We'll get a chunk to this block. So this can be zero to 32K. So then maybe I need to divide that then, or modulo that by four bytes. So if we had 8,000, bit 8,000 would be in which four byte chunk of zero to 32K? That would be like if it's, yeah, well, yeah, if it's 8,000, then it'd be 8,000. If the bit started at 32K plus 8,000, then it'd still be 8,000 here, I think, so. Probably, I don't think it would be divide by four. Would it, would it be? Would it be modulo four? But then we'd have to add this. Yeah, that should work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll add on to chunk, which is four bytes. But we'll add on our bit divided by four bytes, or I can do size of 32T. And that would give the start of the four byte chunk. I don't think this would work. <laughs> modulo. Would I, would I add on the bit modulo, you know, four in this case? I'm probably overcomplicating this way too much. Because I'm doing this down here. I know I have to do divide and modulo to find the right bit to set. I don't know if this is correct. That doesn't seem like it would be right, actually. Well, no, it could be. If it's bit 8,000, then this would be 2,000. Is that correct? Because 2,000 added on four bytes at a time would be 8,000. So I think that actually might be all right. And then we could add on modulo. If it's 8,004, no. But then I could do this maybe, modulo 32. I'm trying to think, do I have to offset further from this? So if bit equals 8,000, you know, chunk is the start. Chunk would point to that. Probably need to do 32 bits at a time. Or yeah, I do need to do 32 bits at a time, so. I'm overcomplicating this, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's painful for me too, man. I would have to reduce bit by this number if I did this, because bit is still at 8K. I'd have to reduce it. And that would be the number to add this by. I know I have to do this first though, to constrain it to zero to 32K. And then I guess I have to constrain that number further in terms of four bytes at a time. So not 30, well, yeah, zero to 32 gate within 32 bits at a time or four bytes. Yeah. Or four bytes at a time. So 32 bits at a time would be divided by 32. And that would be the start of the next 32 bit chunk. Would that be right? Maybe I do that plus equal bit divided by 32. Is that what this would be? The start of the 32 bit area within this whole block. Sorry about the cursor there. And then I would set the bit. That's what I could do. I could offset by that then. Yeah, and that would be, that would be what this is. I'm hoping this is correct. It's probably not, <laughs> but my brain hurts. I'm hoping that's correct. <laughs> That's the start of the 32-bit area in memory after it's been constrained 0 to 32k. And we would AND and set the bit. If we wanted to set it, we would OR, sorry, not AND. You've probably been yelling at your screen for the last hour. We'd OR it with one shift left by the, third, the bit within the 32 bits starting at this 32-bit chunk within the block. So this 32-bit area and this bit within that 32-bit area, 0 to 31, 
this bit within that 32-bit area would be set. So I think this might be correct. I'm hoping this is correct. But this, I think, does need to happen because a bit is like 40,000, then 40,000 is going to be beyond this block, so we have to constrain that 0 to 32k. But that would be within this block. So I think this is right. All right. Uh, sorry for taking so long with that. I might have to have a clear bit function as well. But right now, probably it's only just setting it in use. So we find the next free bit. Well, we set, we set this bit as in use. And then we find the next free bit, given that that bit is now in use. Assuming these functions are correct, which they probably aren't. So then we need to do the same for data bits. Let's do that. Set the data bit as in use. Set that bit in use. Set inode bit as in use. Set data bit as in use in data bitmap blocks. So we do the first. Are we doing the inode bitmap blocks? This would not be inode block, this would be bitmap block. That would be different. <laughs> yeah, first inode bitmap block. But then I'm, I'm reducing this by bits per block anyway. And yeah, the number bitmap block, yes, okay. So this would be the first data bitmap block. Plus that. And this would not be new inode ID, this would be this extent zero dot first block. So this is the next bit, but we're setting that so I can use that directly here. This would be super block first free data bits, since that's the bit we're setting. And that would be divided by bits per block, and then we'll also send that here. First free data bit. So it would set that in use inside of that block. Then I want to find and set the next free data bit, or just find the next free data bit. Yeah, because we're setting it there. Copy that. This will be first free data instead of inode bit. Find first free bit and disk blocks instead of inode. This would be data. Okay. Yeah, so my setting, the bit here, first free inode bits, first free data bit, yeah. And since those are being set, then we'll update the super block with that info later. Okay. All right, that took me way too long. Hopefully I'll edit down my frustrations and consternation and whatever other words end with Asian. <laughs> Trying to set a freaking bit in a block and being confused. Update file system info for new inode. That's what I'm doing here, right? Update inode blocks. Oh, the inode blocks. Not the bits, not the bitmap blocks, but the inodes themselves. Yes, I have to write the new inode to the right inode block position. Which I can write one sector at a time for that, I believe. Because I have the inode data set, because I made a new one. I'm setting the ID. I'm setting its length and size. I'm not setting the size, am I? Well, the size could be zero. Yeah, it does start at zero, that's true, because there's no data written yet, so that's probably yeah, all we need. So let's write one sector starting at what sector? Our super block, first inode block, times sectors per block, so that's the starting block for the inode sector. I could make like a little macro to do this, so it's not, you know, Every time I have to write this out, it's duplicated. And the macro would just be this, and it would be first inode block or something. Um, first inode disk block, something like that. And I would add on to our ID, our bit number. That would also be the offset. That would be the inode, the number of the inode. It's also the number of the bit within the inode bitmaps, but 
I think. Have I been doing this wrong the whole time? Probably. <laughs> Uh, but no, yeah, it's a bitmap of the inode. So inode number three would correspond to the bit number three within the inode bitmap as well. Yeah, so that's correct. Yeah, but it'd also be the inode number, which is the offset from the start of the inodes. So it would also be the inode ID divided by inodes per, uh, per block or per sector. I'm loading one sector, right? I've got myself all confused now. <laughs> We have inodes per sector, not block. So the sector that I'm loading, yeah, times sectors per block times inode per sector. So if it's inode three, then this would be zero. If it's inode nine, it would be one, because it would be divided by eight. Yeah, so that should be okay. Just make all these four lines to read easier. The address we want to load that sector to. We'll say again is going to be our temp sector as long as we use it after we've done this stuff up above yeah this is all going to be single threaded or whatever so that's fine and we'll do read with retry maybe i'll worry about mutexes and threads in like another 10 years when i make more progress probably not for a long time update inode blocks for new file inode so i'd be reading that to memory then i'd be Getting the right one to update. I don't have an inode pointer yet. No. The file system inode. I don't know. This would be inode block inode. I'll just call it fs inode. Inode t pointer to the temp sector. I could call it temp. That'd be fine because it's a temporary one. Then what I want to do is get a pointer to the right one we want to set, which would be plus. Well, I could do it on the next line too. I want to set the data at the inode. So I could do set the data at temp inode, but I have to add it first. So yeah, let me, let me add that here. So that'd be plus. Um, the right offset, which would be new inode ID modulo inodes per sector I'm not sure if I need to double the friends for that but that's fine so if it was ID 9 then that would be 1 because we have the start of it which would be yeah 1 if it was ID 8 it would be 1 offset 0 if it's ID 9 it would be 1 offset 1 yeah 10 would be ID 1 offset 2 sector 1 so that would be the start of the inode, or that would be, no, this would be pointing directly to the right data in memory. So we want to set that data in memory. So set the data at the temp inode equal to our new inode. Everything is inode. That word ceases to have meaning anymore. It's becoming a fake word because you say it too much. <laughs> the temp inode, we're setting that, and then we want to write the data back to disk. Because that's what we loaded to the temp sector. We changed the data at the temp sector. We want to write that back to disk at the right sector. So we just do the same thing and writing it back. And since I'll probably be doing a read, update, and write, I may try to think of a way to abstract that in some way to a general, a general function, like update this given some chunk, I don't know, <laughs> given a type. <laughs> and a thing to set in that type, and then this would be like a one-liner, but that's only if it comes in multiple parts, which it probably will. So I'll say update inode blocks for new, that's what this does, update for parent directory. Yeah, to do. Data bitmap for the parent directory. If it takes up another block of data, so we have to check, do we have the parent directory inode? I do have parent inode, okay. This would be something like if parent inode size bytes, do we have the size in blocks? We have the size in sectors, and that divided by sectors per block would be the size in blocks. So that's how we would determine. So if size in sectors 
yeah, divided by sectors per block. Well, we could do bytes to blocks, right? That is a that's an easier way. I byte. Well, yeah, yeah, bytes to blocks. Let's do that. If bytes to blocks of the parent inodes size and bytes. Let's do this here. I can't think. <laughs> Say current blocks. equals that current size. All right. Let's do this. Just write it out because it makes it makes more sense. So we'd have size and bytes plus the size of a new directory entry because that's what we're going to add to it. Add to the parent. The parent directory will have a new directory entry, a new file name and ID added to its data. So if that's larger by at least one, or I guess if they're not equal, we'll just say if new blocks, yeah. If new blocks is larger than current blocks, we'll have to allocate another disk block and add it on. Which would not be fun. Allocate, find a new data bitmap bit. For a new block or a new data block. So I'll have to do this, which I'll probably do later. <laughs> I'm going to assume it doesn't take up another block just yet, but there is only eight that can fit within a sector and eight sectors in a block. So if we have more than 64 approximately directory entries, we'd have more than one block. And we'd have fragmentation resulting probably. We'll find a new data bitmap bit for a new data block. Probably set a new extent, maybe, or see if we can extend a current extent in this inode. Ooh, that would be painful. Check if current, currently used extents can be expanded. That would probably be the easiest. If the current extent, if we have an extent within this, like at the end of its, you know, current data, say it's using two extents. If the second one has a length in blocks of two and we have to add one, so it would be going to three, we can search for where the current bits, the current data blocks are being used. So that would probably be good to check first. Check if, yeah. Check if the currently used extents, first block and length blocks, data bits, just write it all out verbosely, in the data bitmap can be expanded by one. E.g., let's say extent first block is 20. Length in blocks is two, needs to go to three. Two plus one is three. We'd be adding a new block. Check if data bits and subsequently data blocks on disk. Check if the data bits and data bitmap for bits 20, 21, 22, oh, 20 and 21, so just 20 to 22, zero based, are free, or only bit 22 in this case. All right, if so, that'd be easily expandable. So if so, use that bit. And we'll do this, if not, Allocate a new bit. But in this case, we would have to make a new extent. So allocate a new bit for a new data block and add new extent to, um, to parent inode. First block equals new data bit found. 
length blocks equals one. So that would be an issue, right? We'll have to do this later, but I said that here so I don't have to remember it later. <laughs> Otherwise we'd have to find a new bit and that would take a new extent because it wouldn't be added onto the previous one. So we probably should have some process later. I don't know about running ever so often, maybe run as needed if we get some certain amount of disk disk space filled up that would go through and like concatenating in the free list for malloc. We'd find sections of bits that are empty and move them around maybe for files so they're allocated appropriately across the disk instead of being in weird fragmented states. But that may be a bit too beyond what I need to worry about for a long time. So, But I'll keep it here and I might have something to think about regarding moving disk blocks around and defragmenting later on. That might be an interesting problem to work through. So other than that, we'd have to update the inode blocks and the data blocks, data bitmap, because we don't have to update an inode bitmap because we already have the inode that exists for the parent inode. We only have to worry about the data bitmap if needed. Update inode and the data blocks. The data blocks would be adding the new directory entry for new file name and ID. And I'm not sure I need to update any other data but we'll say such as file size. Okay, so that actually, I don't think these will be too bad, but I'm tired and I've gone for over an hour so far, so I'm gonna stop here. And hopefully this was okay, other than me struggling to find and set bits for forever. <laughs> Getting some more helper functions and things set up. Hopefully it's a little easier still as we go over time. I don't think I'll be able to record another one for at least Another one of these, well, when this comes out, I'll have time, but at the time of recording, this will be my last one for a while, because I gotta move out a little bit until uh, my heating and stuff is fixed, because it's gonna be freezing next week, and it's up in the air whether I'll have people come out and repair it by then, so. I'll be in a different place maybe for a week or two, we'll see, until that's fixed. But yeah, other than that, we should be all right. I had to make directory stub down here. And then that would hopefully finish out, create file, and open, and then we can move on to close. This is like four or more freaking videos over just open, but that's all right. It's setting up a lot of groundwork. So hopefully it's provided some value to you, me thinking through the process and struggling. <laughs> if not, that's fine too. If you skip to this part, that's fine. But thanks for watching. Appreciate it. And uh, yeah, cheers, right? Хорошая <laughs> вода. That's a little bit. All right, good water, buena. What is water? Agua? Bu buenas agua? I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, I almost forgot this time to fix compile errors. So let me do that actually before I end. <laughs> J is undeclared at 214. That's true. 32TJ. This is offset by that. That should be fine, yeah. Yeah, because this will be 0 to 1024. It could be 16-bit, but that's fine. I expected another thing. One, two, one, two. Oh, another one around the if. For which one? Oh, this one? No, I have one there. Oh, one, two, three, two, one. There we go. There we go, and I'm gonna be annoyed if it doesn't work, and it does work, so we're good. Hey, didn't mess anything up this time. Any memory issues printing? Nope, no memory, no memory leaks. All right, I'll make a help command eventually to list commands. Forgot, I wanted to do that, because that's just printing a string, that's pretty easy. I'll add that to the to-do list probably, but thanks for watching, which I might have already said, but if I didn't yet, appreciate it. And yeah, I'll be off for a bit until hopefully my HVAC and heating gets fixed. Uh, when that gets fixed, then I'll be back and, and recording stuff again as of this recording. So probably won't be able to get to editing videos a lot either because I'd have to move the desktop and everything. So anyway, when this gets to you, hope you're doing well and cheers.